work. Oh, really? Um, Any technology? Oh, it gives you the shits. Yeah. Quite anyway, right. that, um, that's sort of just the way it is. So now, now I've lost you again. Where's my buddy Zoom gone? Uh, let's yeah. have a look. I'll and I'll yeah, and yeah, I'll go. gotcha. Yeah, I've got you. I'm just going to pop it down there. And okay. I'll go here. I'm going to put you on uh, a little stand. Oh, that's not going to work. And I should be able to go sideways, but it's not. You still there? Yeah. I, uh, yeah. I can't see it. But I can hear you. Um, I've gone. Your video's up. There you go, bro. I don't know what's going on here. I've lost you, but I've got me. As long as we've got you. There we are now, I've got you. Excellent. Give myself some volume and we're right. Oh, I've got some other people too, that's always good. Oh, brilliant. It's Bruce with you. <laughs> no, 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 I've got some other people showing up on the video. Oh, I see, good. I don't know why it wouldn't work on Ross's iPad. Very much, didn't want to. Boring, very boring. So I made the fatal error of um, not checking my temperature of my wine, and they were so <laughs> bloody cold. I had to stick them outside. Singapore was really good like that. It didn't take long. Actually, well, that's one of the beauties. It did it here at the moment. It's about ten degrees. So. Yeah, I saw you with a jumper on there. I'm, I, I think I've forgotten how those things work. This is, uh, this is getting in towards you know autumn. We're heading in towards winter. Yeah, it's a uh, it's raining. You know, we get seasons over here. Yeah, I've forgotten how that works. <laughs> it's crazy. <laughs> it is a little bit. And um, so uh, the harvest is now all in, of course. If, what's your overall like, impression of, of this year? Oh, look, it was um, interesting for that means. Uh, small, very small harvest. We were down by 50%, yeah, uh, which, we which we anticipated. We thought we would be. Right. And um, uh, it, it all stems from very poor weather conditions last spring, Australian time. So we're, we're talking late last year, November, December. We so had two or three or four weeks of, of, okay. of drizzle and, and just, just not conducive to flowering and setting. Mm -hmm. But there was a lot of berry portion. There was plenty of flowers. They just didn't set. And we, we, knew, we knew from Christmas onwards that the crop was going to be well down. We didn't know how far, but we knew it was going to be well down. And how's that impact on quality? Is it, it, is that <laughs> you know, that's, what, that's what we always reckon. You know. there's, there's the old saying, though. Know, low quantity, great quality, yeah. which I think is true. And I'd like to tell people that it's true. Yeah. It's that, um, you know, some of our, some of the years like 04 and I, that, that were really massive have turned out to be some of our best ones. So <laughs> I don't know, Robert, I don't know. I would say that the boys are very happy with okay. what we've got. We picked good by mace. Um, all the specs were really, really good. So when I spoke to the wine makers, they look, you know, we looked at the fruit. The fruit looks good. It's got big colour. It's got loads and loads and loads of flavour. Uh, it's just that we picked about half of what we would normally have picked. All right. But certainly, certainly pretty wrapped in, in the quality of the, of, what, of the fruit. Yeah, it looks really good. Excellent. How are we going? How many people have we got joined on your end? Looks like 14, um, but we had some security patch problems the first the first email that went out so i'll probably have emails from anything they can't get in oh yeah probably how you going brian technology, oh, technology you know what it's like yeah it never ends gives you the shit how you going mate someone, someone come along going well thanks how are you not too bad hopefully get to see you up here again someday soon well, I hope so, but I mean, I was going to be up there, as you know, for Food and Hotel Asia. When was that supposed to be, Robert? I can't remember. Mate, I think it was, um, so I think it was now, late May. It was early, no, it was, it was, uh, was it early April, late March, something like that. Anyway, I was supposed to be up there for that. Right. As, soon as, as soon as they'll let us fly again. But look, honestly, 
I can't see international air travel leaving Australia before the end of the year. No, I think you'll be able to get across the Tasman. Yes, the if you want to. <laughs> if you... <laughs> I'm not sure why I'd go, Robert. I'd stay here. <laughs> I mean, I just... I was, I was... I'd, I'd love, I'd love to be over there with you guys. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, we'll definitely, we'll definitely work something out as, as soon as we can, for sure. Um, and you know that um, uh, it will, um, it will all happen eventually, yeah. and, and I'll be there. Yeah. Um, I'm quite a oh. fan of. of the Whoops. <laughs> oh, that was me. That was me managing to knock my bloody phone over. Oh, okay. So that I, 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 um, I really should uh, see if I get this other thing going. But anyway, we will uh, we will see what happens. That's no, not going to work. All right, no problems. Sorry, what are we going to talk about, Robert? How we got a minute to go? We got a minute to go, and then I thought maybe if you could just uh, well, I've kind of jumped the gun asking about that harvest, but maybe we can talk to the guys about 2016 generally in Kunawara versus the rest of Oz for Cabernet. Um, and then we'll taste the, mus the musician and then we'll taste the, the Cabernet, I guess. Yeah. Take it that way and see how we go. Why not? Why not? Welcome, Hans. We've got a couple of wine people from South Africa who are, who are watching tonight. And oh, welcome all the way from South Africa. Yeah, there's even somebody from Austria, I believe, who's, who's going to be who's jumping on in a second. The biggest oh, complaint the Austrians have is they can't get your wine there. No, uh, look, Europe's difficult for us to get wine into. I mean, there's so much wine in Europe. Yeah. Why on earth do they want to go and buy a tin pot Australian from Colonel Warren? <laughs> I mean, honestly, uh, you know, there's, it, they've got... They've got their own wine, but they've got France, they've got Germany, they've got Italy, they've got Spain, they've got Portugal, and everywhere in between on their doorstep. Mm. And it's so cheap, right? Oh, of course it is. Yeah. It's, uh, it's, it's, and of course, you know, no taxes, no nothing, no everything like that. Labor's still relatively well-priced. Yeah. So, yeah, they've got everything going for them. All right. Well, we're on seven o'clock, so let's let's get going. So, Prof, maybe yeah. if, you, if you'd like to start by just um, talking about 2016 as a vintage, and then we'll go from there. Um, 2016 was a good vintage. Uh, crop was average. Um, growing conditions were really good. Now, I've got to say that in Coonawarra, that's not unusual. Um, I know I brag about this place, Robert, but it is a very good place to grow grapes. <laughs> um, we tend not to get massive vintage variation. Um, the only thing that can really go wrong in Coonawarra is it rains in the middle of vintage. And we saw that in 2011, of course, mm -hmm. but we haven't seen, we haven't seen it since. Um, we have a great climate uh, in the main. Um, so I mean, you, you, you can line them up and, and we will rub it later on, won't we do a, a, a semi-vertical? You can line them up and look at them and you won't see massive amounts of okay, vintage. Yeah. Vintage. But 16 was a good vintage. All, all the teens were really good. 11 was difficult. We know that. Although the wines are showing up very well at the moment. But uh, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, and 20. Now, I know that sounds stupid, but they're all very good. All right. They're all very good. I mean, the one thing that I've learned over the years of tasting Magella is that its trajectory of maturation is so profoundly impressive. Like we, yes. I'm, I'm really thinking to myself, my God, we, we, we're drinking the 16s tonight, but they really, they really deserve another five years before we sort of start to see what they want really to do. Um, I, 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 do I, know, I, I think I like they deserve it longer than that. And I tried, uh, I tried 2004 Shiraz on um, Saturday night. Yeah. And uh, it looked superb. Yeah. Uh, looked really superb. We would have, and there was no rush to drink it at all. Yeah. Um, I'm quite happy to say that it would, it would have lasted, it will last another a minimum of 10 years. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, I can't. I don't, I don't know what causes that. Kunawara wines, in general, are relatively long lived. Yeah. But but um, I think at Magella, we we seem to be sticking with. We, we seem to be hitting the holy grail. You know, the wines are approachable, 
at a young age. Yeah. Um, looks pretty good in middle age, and they look really good in older age. I wish the same could be said for myself. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, and I just for the people who are who are watching this evening, what Fox put together for us to offer next month is a sequence of three different back vintages of the Cabernet and three different back vintages of the Shiraz. And um, there's only 24 packs. We're just trying to figure out how to get it here, et cetera. But everyone who attended tonight will get a, get a shot at looking at that wine with Prof in June. Um, and I have to say, literally, I guess, now hundreds of tastings that I've done in Singapore, I think the one that was the most fun was that back vintage tasting we did with you in the bowels of the earth under the casino where we were three flights down and at about 3 a.m. the staff completely gave up on us and told us to leave. And I still remember friends of mine staggering up those stairs, pulling their shoes off their high heels and then clattering past the casino trying to get home. It was hilarious. It was one of the best. Uh, and the other, one, the other one, Robert, was when we did that blend your own tasting in that old school or library, whatever it was, it started off as really slow. No one would say anything. Yeah. And within two hours, I mean, it was an absolute... <laughs> it was riotous, I remember. And then we had to, we had to do the, the, the judging of the, of the blends. <laughs> we did. <laughs> that was a good one. So, Prof, maybe let's have a look at the Muso first. For those who don't know the wines in particular, what's... Really cool about looking at these two side by side is that the musician is a a, a far lesser oak treated wine um, than the than the cabernet. The cabernet maybe Prof will tell us a little bit about the uh, what kinds of oak, the age of the oak, etc. But um, it's quite interesting to see a manifestation of of cabernet in these two ways, or be the user with uh, with some Shiraz as well. So Prof, yeah, let's, I'll... let's have a look at that. So, what are you looking at first, Robert? Musician, if that's okay. Musician is perfect. Now, I mean, for those that don't know the musician, I think everyone does now because we've had it for what nearly fifteen years now. Robert. Four, I think. Um, you know, and as a, to tell the truth, I've told the story a hundred times. It grew out of a very boozy night in Singapore <laughs> after after Food and Hotel Asia with some um, with some F and B people and a couple of songs. Uh, and someone said, "Why could you make a wine that would come in at the right price for our Buy the Glass program? Um, a long story about how we came about it. I came, came back to Bruce and said, can we do something like that? And he said, yeah, sure. What about doing a Cab Shiraz blend? Because we had the product at hand. Yeah. And so, um, so we did it. I've got to say the first one he put together, Robert, we had to dumb down a bit because it was too good. <laughs> uh, given the fact that it was probably as good as our Cabernet and Shiraz, we, yeah. had to, we had to get some sort of point of difference. Yeah. So um, uh, we came up with, with the blend. It, it, it varies a little bit, anywhere between 70% Cab, 30% Shiraz and 60%, 60-40. Somewhere in the middle. It varies from year to year. So a little um, bit like the 389. Depending, depending on the weight of the wines. Right. Um, what we're trying to do is get some consistency uh, because this is not a wine, this is not a real vintage wine, this is not a wine for people to put away. Yeah, It certainly wouldn't last. You can put it away for 10 years, it'll look really good. Mm. But it won't look spectacularly better than what it is now. This is very much a, a wine that's designed to buy from Wine Exchange Asia today, yeah. drink it tonight and order some more tomorrow. That sounds that's absolutely perfect. It's the wine to drink while all the other wines in your cellar are aging. Yes. But, but it, it was never meant to be anything but a bloody good drink. Yeah. And, and it's up to that. And it's it's still very much the, the go-to wine for many of our customers. Say, look, you know, when we're around, if it's a barbecue, if it's a drink, we just want a, something to drink. We'll go and open a bottle of Musician because it's relatively well-priced. And a very good wine for what it is, and scores. I mean, it wins trophies of the 17, which will be out hopefully within a month or so. Uh, we're going to use a bit of 16 up first, but the 17, you know, took out best blended red wine in the Adelaide Wine Show, and then took it again at the Melbourne Wine Show. Missed on the Jimmy Watson by about, you know, a, a bee stick. It was that. Well, you it know, was, it was that. 
in Singapore, trying to deliver quality at $3 a bottle is something of a challenge. And in fact, just today, a client was asking me to put something together for them. And really, there's not even five red wines in our vast portfolio of maybe 400 SKUs that I can, that I can recommend with total comfort. And this is one of them. You know, at that price point, it's fairly unbeatable. And, and not only that, you know, I, I used to sell it as a point, you know, you've got some visitors coming for dinner. Uh, you know, they're not great, great wet wine drinkers, so you're not going to go down in the cellar and pull out a grain or a oh, yeah. of grace. Well, but you don't want to go down to their level as well. I mean, you don't want to go and drink a bag in a box or cast wine or something like that. Yeah. So you bring out a wine like the musician, knowing full well, I'll probably say to you, that's a good red wine. Where'd you get that from? Yeah, yeah. I mean, there's, there's this thing in Singapore, which you may or may not have heard of before. It's called the, uh, the trailing spouse shelf. And many, many of my clients uh, are in Singapore and travel a lot. And their spouses are only given access to certain pre-determined <laughs> shelves in their, in their wine cellars. <laughs> and the musician often finds its way there. Rightly or wrongly, uh, it occurs, it's often happening up there. I, I, I hope that's not too true. I mean, I hope it's not too sexist because as far as I'm concerned, I've got far better balance than the men. So I'm sure that... You know, no, well, I, I have to tell you that I have a huge number of trailing spouses who are husbands and not, and not wives. So it's <laughs> <not balance. laughs> uh, and, and look, and make no bones. We, we, we never profess the musician mm. to be something... You know, really good. This is this is, and yet we're known for it because it does come up like that. It, it it's really meant to be nothing else but a bloody good drink. Mm. It is a bloody good drink, yeah. and uh, and consistently comes up that way, and it's been copied a number of times. I've had senior winemakers, seen wines come out and said that looks a bit like the musician. You know, one of whom I, I won't mention any names, but I did say to the owner, it's a big label. I said, that wine sort of re reminiscent of the musician. He said, well, so bloody sure we drank enough of yours. <laughs> uh, I, think uh, I, I, I suppose the imitation is the sincerest form of flattery. Yeah. And, uh, and, and rightly so. so. So it should be. Looking at it tonight, I think that um, there's a kind of quiet softness about it that I really, I really like. Um, in previous years, on initial release, some of the musicians can be a little bit, a little bit aggressive, but I'm not seeing that at all with this, which is really appealing. Um, and there's also a lot of beautiful cassis but on the mid palate, so it's it's still evolving clearly. The length is still still coming through, but um, really, really beautiful showing. I, I I think the reason that it um, that it softened off a little bit is because. I mean, the musician was made pretty well to, to drink within 12 months or release within 12 months. Mm -hmm. um, partly because of circumstance, we made a lot of 15 and we made a lot of 16. And uh, we, so we, they've, they've taken a little while to finish up onto the market. Yeah. Um, it's hard to know how much of anything to make from, uh, from our point of view. It's not as though we're making Coca-Cola. We can quickly go and make another batch. Yeah. Uh, it won't work like that. So... Uh, we um, so it has it it is a you know six or eight months older than the musician normally would be, that's helped a lot, and I think also from the year sixteen sixteen had some lovely soft tannins, and I think you'll see that in the cabinet as well. They're they're not aggressive. They're very they're very Frenchy sort of tannins. They they come around the side of your tongue. Yep. Uh, and um, particularly because you know there is a preponderance of cabernet sauvignon in that wine, and, and I think that's where it comes from. Mm -hmm. Prof, I understand that the well, Canadians, I understand the Canadians consume the lion's share of this musician. Is is that still the case? Well, no, well, the Australia. Our biggest market is Australia by far. Okay. Uh, our second biggest market in in uh, international terms is Canada, but Canada in in wine terms is really twelve different countries because every province yeah. has its own sort of liquor laws and its own liquor commissions and it's all government controlled. Right. Uh, and then followed by Asia in general, of which Singapore is a large part. We, we, we sell wine in China, but China doesn't figure highly in, um, in, in, our, in our scheme of things. We, 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 we've always worked on, on the fact that two thirds, roughly two thirds of what we sell is consumed in Australia, and one third's there for export. 
And I think most of you know, because I've, I've already to always told the story, our first ever export market was Singapore. Oh, that's fantastic. I didn't realise that. That's why you're such an expert in where to eat food in Singapore. In fact, you know more about it. <laughs> I started so well. Um, uh, uh, Jeremy Chu. Do you remember Jeremy Chu? Visa and yeah, the Red oh. oh, Way back in the old days. Anyway, yeah. Jeremy, had read, Jeremy had read about uh, Magella in a, in a holiday thing. And he knew Greg Cora. Uh, and I think my, a lot of the people listening and watching know the fat man, Greg yeah, Cora yeah. from... Uh, that's not you, Robert. That's him. <laughs> and uh, anyway, uh, uh, so um, basically Greg wrote me. Uh, no, he rang me. rang me on a Sunday afternoon of all times. And I, in those days, I ran Magellan. So I ran Salador and everything like that. We didn't have as many staff as we do now. Mm. And he introduced himself and said, my name's Greg Cora and I uh, own a company called Inland Trading Company Australia Limited. I thought that sounded sus, Robert. Yes, don't blame you. Look, <laughs> I probably is sus. But anyway, he, um, he said, would you like to sell the mine in Singapore? I said, not really. We didn't have a lot in those days. Yeah. So it, anyway, we, we did some business and uh, started selling some wine in Singapore and a bit more. And then in early 98, uh, Food and Hotel Asia was on at the old World Trade Centre. Yeah. You know, the old one was shut down. And I decided, Greg was going and setting up a stand. And uh, I decided to go along and give him a hand. So I rang him up and said, uh, hey, do you want a hand? And he said, I can't pay you. I said, I don't want to get paid. I've never been to Singapore. <laughs> I got a passport. I go to Singapore. So I went to Singapore, stayed at the Marina Mandarin when it was very new. Yeah. Uh, front up. And I remember after six or eight hours on the next day, by lunchtime, certainly by mid-afternoon, I rang my wife and said, darling, get yourself a passport. You shouldn't have one then. I said, you will like this place. <laughs> And, uh, and I still remember that first morning, I hopped in a cab, I said to the World Trade Center, to the cabbie, I said, do you know the World Trade Center? He said, of course, sir. I said, can you take me there? I said, of course I can. And then he looked at me, he said, you are from England, sir. I said, no, I'm from Australia. He looked at me, he said, well, that's all right then. <laughs> I, thought, I do like this place. And so that was our first export market. And it's, one of, it's probably my most visited uh, international city, city, state, country, whatever you want to call it. I think I've been there well over 30 times now. And, and I, I miss not being there. I miss not being there with, with you tonight. I mean, it's right to do it on Zoom, but it's not the same. Yeah, it, it's nice to actually see you. It's been a while. Uh, but we'll, we'll, we'll fix that as soon as the flights go. So maybe, yeah, we'll get maybe flights we can look at this, uh, at this cabinet next. Hey, have a look at the cabinet. Have a look at it today. I know that you're not a you're not a huge fan of ratings, but um, a 96 point rating from Halliday at this price point makes my job a whole lot easier. <laughs> from the sales oh, point of view, if we don't get 95 or 96 points from James, I, I want to I'd ring him up and say what on earth's going on. Yeah, I mean this. This, this is the one that typifies this Kunawara Cabernet. If if you read uh, hop on the internet. Or read the books. Read what Halliday says about Kunawara Cabernet. Read what anyone else of the of the you know what James Suckling says. Read read what um, Andre Simon said way back in the sixties. This typifies um, Kunawara Cabernet, which is which is why we are approached by um, um, people doing wine classes uh, from uh, from masters of wine all the way down to a community wine class. Um, could we provide some wine because they want to talk about Kunora Cabernet and they think Magella Cabernet typifies. Specific terroir. Yeah. And there's nothing wrong with that. Um, if, if we're going to make Kunora wine, it should taste like Kunora wine. I don't want yeah. it to taste like Vermont wine, much as I love that, or wine from the Adelaide Hills or wine from Clare or wine from Yarra Valley or wine from anywhere mm. or wine from Bordeaux. Uh, I want it to taste like Kunora wine because that's where I live. Hmm. Just my immediate, my immediate impression, the phenolics aside, obviously there's loads and loads more nose um, coming up, ribena, dark fruit, etc. on the nose. But what I'm loving is that middle, that middle and back palette because where you've got the musician, which is fairly linear, um, with the cabinet, you've got this beautiful generosity in the mid palette and then just lingering on and off. So what kinds of oak are you using with the cabinet? All right, well, well, Cabernet is always in French. Right. Uh, and um, probably half it would be new French. Right. Um, winemakers 
she'd say run around run away with my money um <laughs> uh, they they love oak <laughs> they, they buy the best uh 90 percent of our oak comes from um, peter john ap john uh, australia's biggest cooper uh, he's based in in Tanunda in the Brossa Valley, or just on the outskirts there. Beautiful oak. Uh, a lot of it is from the centre of France. Uh, uh, there are about. I'm no oak expert. I'm a grape grower, and I rely on our winemakers to, to buy oak. But I know we do buy uh, very good oak, and um, always happy with 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 what we with what we do. And yeah, that wine's seen uh, twenty twenty one months. Well, there are boats. We can certainly put on the bottle eighteen months because if we put in twenty months and it was nineteen months and and uh, and a few days, someone would work it out and take us to some trade court or something. And Prof, uh, what percentage is new and what percentage is um, secondary oak? Well, roughly, 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 forty-five to fifty percent of it's new. It's a and then the rest of it is. It's, it's, it's first, second, like second or third use. We we get rid of them after that. We don't keep old oak. Yeah, it's the most expensive part of our operation. Is oak. No yeah, no doubt. Only winemakers. Mm. <laughs> There's um. Makes it taste good. Well, James, Although it's funny, it's funny though yeah. because in Australian wine show circles, if you're uh, with the new U Butte, yeah, um, of wine judges, they see oak as a fault. So if a wine, a wine comes up to a wine show and it is showing oak, it will be marked down. Mm, uh, I don't know. I grew, I grew up. I grew up when um, when it was pretty good. Um, but anyway, well, a decade, way... ago, a decade ago, if you didn't show enough oak, you were marked. You had to show plenty of oak to get a decent rating. Um, of course. But, but what I'm what I'm what I'm noticing in this particular example, though, is a really clever fusion between the oak and the fruit. They're really they one and the same as opposed to showing themselves in different different ways. And that's quite smart for a wine as simply as this. Uh, a good friend of mine, Gary Baldwin, um, uh, a wine writer, wine expert, consultant, wine judge, uh, lecturer in wine, once wrote an article that sticks in my mind. He And basically he said, never ever say over-oaked, say under-fruited. Uh, because if you've got fruit, you can add oak to it. Mm. Fruit is, is is your canvas, you know. It's 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 either this big, or it's this big. Mm. If it's this big, you can't put too much. If you if you add too much, it will dominate and overcome the fruit. If if what's just stop my phone down again, guys. Uh, if, <laughs> yeah. if it's this big, if it's if it's a you know a massive canvas, you can add what you like to it. Yeah. And uh, and I, I questioned Gary on that a couple of times, and he said, "Prof, I still stick with it." You see, we can we can do things, rubber. We can we can add tannin, more oak. We can add oak flavour. What we can't do is add fruit flavour. Fruit flavour comes from out there. I'm sitting in my office in the winery, so I'm pointing out the window at the vineyards. Mm. That is where the fruit comes from, mm -hmm. and um, uh, we work like hell to get that real fruit flavour. Uh, at harvest time, if I walk the vineyard, which of course we do every day. And, uh, and I'll, I'll bite into a bunch of grapes. If I can bite into a bunch of Cabernet and it tastes like ripe blackberries, then I reckon that's ready to go. That's, yep. that's the sort of flavour uh, that we want. I'll say to the wine boys, hey, put that in the bottle. Mm. Put that flavour in the bottle. I guess that's one of the reasons why Magella traversed the, the, the bumpy years of Parker, where people were trying to create a wine to a certain taste. You guys have been making wine to your own specificity since you kicked off. And that's probably the reason why you've endured so long. Oh, Parker was a little bit of irrelevant in that he didn't like Kunawara. Uh, he was not a Kunawara fan. Mm. Uh, never was. I freely, freely admitted it. Mm -hmm. um, and, I, and Parker liked those really big, highly phenomenal, um, high pH, um, uh, high alcohol, dare I say, over mm. um wines from, from particularly from Brosser Valley and, and, and more particularly from, and also from uh, McLaren Vale and some others and, and, and gave them uh, very high points. Um, so it was a bit irrelevant to us. It, it, we knew whatever we did didn't really matter. Yeah. We got good points from, uh, from Parker. 
uh, but you know, it was one of those things. And, and don't forget, Robert, with with most of our market being in Australia, most Australians would have looked and said, "Parker, who?" Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, it's true. Because um, you know, in Australia, we 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 don't look at points. I mean, no one ever walks into our cellar door, or no one walks in there at the moment anyway, we're shut with COVID, but yeah. no one walks in there with a holiday under their arm, unless yeah. they're an international visitor. Yeah. Most yeah. Australians come that they judge, they judge by their own power. If they like it, they'll buy it. If they don't like it, they'll tell you go and get stuff. Yeah. yeah. <clears throat> they might say, look, I know that Halliday gave this 95 points, but I don't like it, so I'm not going to buy it. Yeah. yeah. Fair enough. Yeah. I don't mind that. I'll live with that. <laughs> Well, I mean, at the end of the day, um, we have to we have to drink what we like. We don't have to drink what someone else likes mm. or what someone else told us we should like. Um, I do find unless of course, unless of course you're selling it for sale later on. Yeah, and yeah. then I always suggest that if you want to do that, then buy fine art. I think or if, invest in postage I think, I think if you're buying wine on a semi-industrial scale. And you don't have time to taste everything that you that you want to own. I often say to people, um, find writers that you you believe you have the same taste level with, and follow them, uh, as opposed to just uh, going for the huge scores every time. I think one of the most interesting dinners I ever went to here in Singapore was themed when when critics disagree, and one of the wines that stood out that night was. A little number from Barossa Valley. Uh, I won't mention the label, but it, it's several hundred dollars a bottle. And um, one wine writer gave it 88, and uh, the other wine writer gave it 96 or 97. Or and yeah. um, you know, that's a really interesting manifestation of how personalities and time and place change change people's perception. I, uh, I, I could tell a story. But 2000, uh, sorry, 1998 Malia. Which yep. I think is the best wine that we've ever, ever, ever produced. Mm, I've drunk it. <clears throat> took, uh, went, went, to the, um, uh, went to the Melbourne show and took best red blend, yep. best red wine, best wine of show. So two weeks later, it was the Adelaide show, and I fronted up thinking, here we go, winning trophies. And he got 14 and a half points out of 20, which was tipped the bloody stuff down the drain. <laughs> it's, it's awful. I was crestfallen. Three weeks later, it was the national show in Canberra and took five trophies there. So, I don't know. Yeah, I, 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 I think I think you, that I've I've often said you know that the luckiest man or woman, luckiest person, mm. is someone that's fine, that has found the wine that they really love and just drinks and it's eight dollars and it's eight dollars a bottle. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, that that that's the trick <laughs> is to find the eight dollars well, a bottle. <laughs> yeah, of course. But I mean, the, find the wines that you like rather than the wines that have got high points. Yeah. Or the wines that I've, I've I've looked at wines that um, that people have raved about and that are immensely expensive. Mm. And to tell you the truth, I I haven't liked them very much. I did have a customer say to me with the new Hill of Grace coming out at eight hundred and fifty bucks a bottle that they said, whatever, however many musician I can buy for that, I would buy eight hundred and fifty dollars worth of musician <laughs> because I know then I could drink it every night for the next God knows how long and. <laughs> That I think, might be right. I think the other the other thing that that, that Parker did um, was, of course, wines that were selling for thirty dollars a bottle suddenly became three hundred dollars a bottle, yeah. or five hundred dollars a bottle, and priced themselves out of most people. And they'll put on my they'll put on my headstone, Robert. Uh, he likes Prof. Probably not much of a fella, but he never ripped us off. Yeah. <laughs> Because you see, I am I am got a great palate. I'm I'm a great grower and I'm a wine marketer. I've mm. never made a bottle of wine. I'm never likely to. I reckon I'd stuff it up. Uh, and I look at I look at a wine and say, what would I pay for that? What would I? What would I? If it was on a restaurant list, why would I buy it on a restaurant list? Why would I pay for it a, in a in a retail outlet? Why would I pay for it for a dozen bottles of wine from Wine Exchange Asia from uh, from Lou and Robert? Mm. I don't know. I don't know. Which is which is why our wines are reasonably priced. It also means that's why we can always sell them. Yeah, we, we the end of the an day. enormous, enormous yeah, amount. Of product. Rock, would it be fair to say, going going back to this cabinet now over the last half hour, that compared yeah. to 2015, it's a little bit more malleable. It's still softer and more inviting at this early stage. Than the I think that's the year. 
I think that's the year. Just that it, 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 it's one of those years where it approaches a little a little early. I think you'll find the 17 might be back like the 15 a little bit. Might be just a bit more um, yeah. restrained early on. I think I think the 16 is very generous at the moment. Mm. Mm, mm. No, I love the immediacy of it. And my, my next question was, I really don't follow the Halliday uh, projections on cellaring because they, they're just absurd sometimes. But where would you see this in terms of reaching a, a cruising altitude from a cellaring <laughs> point of view? And how, how long? That's, so that's, once again, that, that's well, well and truly subjective because I don't, I don't know what, what you're looking for. I mean, do you want? Wines that are starting to show some age and a bit, you know, a bit of colour around the sides and bringing, starting those tertiary uh, characters. Or do you want wines that have still got good, bright secondary characters mm -hmm. um, and, uh, and a very bright drinking? Certainly, the wines will last 20 odd years. Mm -hmm. I mean, um, uh, I looked at 99 Cabernet the other day and it's, it's probably a little bit too young. I'd, I, I'd, I'd keep it a little bit longer. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, so I, I don't think there's a, there's a problem there. I think. I think the furthest back I've been with you, the furthest back I've been with you is '84, and that would have been about five years ago, and that wine was still plenty of room. I wasn't. Was not. Was '94. '94. It was '94. Oh, I thought we had some. Yeah. So yeah. yeah. I went my, 80, '84. I was still at school. No, it wasn't. 80, 84 we were still growing grapes. We hadn't, we hadn't, we hadn't uh, launched into the big business of building a winery. So I got, a, I got a, a painter working for me at the moment. He was quizzing me about why we did it, and I said I still can't work it out. You know, put your head in the noose and <laughs> I roll a lot of money, but it's been good fun. Um, can I say, for those people that can afford it, buy half a dozen. If you can afford it, buy a dozen, and. Um, uh, and then um, start, you know, drink one now, make a cellar note or a note in your head if your if your brain's good, you know. Mm. And then do the same, do the same exercise in the, in a couple of years. Uh, we, we, and can I say it'll be interesting to see what the comments are in a, in a couple of months from those people who are lucky to get hold of this other pack. Yeah. Where we're doing um, uh, for those who didn't hear a pack of 2006 Shiraz and Cabernet. 2013 Shiraz and Cabernet and 2014 Shiraz and Cabernet uh, in a six pack, and that'll be um, that'll be interesting. Yeah, I was just looking for the vintages while you were talking, but you, you found them. Uh, told the people. Yeah, 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 they're they're up in. They're up what in what we're going to do with that? Is we'll do the Shiraz on one night, and then we'll do the Cabernet on another night, uh, yeah. so that we can look at them carefully. Maybe just one night after the other. But um, yeah. I'll let everybody know about that. We uh, we had a little release uh, in Australia on um, uh, in the, we, be, because we're we, because we're shut the cellar door shut we have cranked mail order right up yeah and uh, you know I still got to sell wine I still got a, still got a business to try and run and uh, and uh, we decided to do a little release just for a couple of weeks of 2014 Shiraz and Cabernet and uh, there is a little um, uh, YouTube video of uh, Marco, Michael Marcus and Bruce Gregory, our winemakers, uh, yeah. along with yours truly, doing it. Um, you can see that on, um, just go YouTube and, and Google Magella or Magella Talks. Right. There are a series of them, an, an interesting one I did with Bruce on Kunawara Cabernet, on Magella style Kunawara Cabernet, not, not specific as per year, but just in general, yeah. what he's looking for, what he's looking for in the vineyard and in the winery. Yeah, uh, there's a uh, there's a little um, guided tour of uh, of parts of Magella there. There's a, a few other little things. Oh, what bit, I'll do, is I'm going to send everybody everybody who right. joined this evening. I'll I'll send them uh, a link to the video from tonight and yeah. to the stock. We took uh, new arrivals flew in this morning of the of both these wines, so they'll Good. be up on the site either tonight or tomorrow. So um, I'll be able to update you with that. We, we've managed to secure some uh, air freight space nowadays. It's not as easy as it was, but you know, I think that's one of the beauties of um, of the way. Um, and I've, I've got to, we we both have to thank Greg for organising all of this. Yeah, uh, Robert, um, because uh, for all his faults and failings, he, he does a good job. And um, uh, because this is wine that uh, you know has been looked after, because you, the wine that you got. Um, left here a couple of days ago. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so it, it has not sat around um, uh, on a on a on a ship um, crossing the equator or doing anything like that. This is yeah. wine that's uh, 
that, that you're buying. Actually, funny part, I remember going to a competitor of yours, Robert. I won't oh, yeah. that, but another one, another wine shop off yeah. uh, River Valley Road. <laughs> uh, no names, no Patrill. But um, but anyway, there was a delivery while I was chatting, yeah. and uh, it included some Magella, which he had ordered two days before. Now I can't get it to Sydney in two days. Yeah, it's just that Greg had it in the warehouse ready to go. Yeah, and uh, he ordered it, and Greg, there was an AV being packed, and he managed to get some on it. So um, it was it was a quick turnaround. Doesn't always happen like that. No, but I can't get it. I can't get from Adelaide in a, less than <laughs> two days. Certainly okay, not in this climate, Prof. I've got a couple of questions from people uh, that wanted to ask you some things. So we've just yeah, got go for five, five minutes left. Um, the, the first question is. Um, Climate change, are you seeing, uh, I guess the answer to the first part is yes, are you seeing changes to, to Kunawara and um, how are you adapting to meet those climate changes? Yeah, so my stuff answer to this is, I'm, I'm a climate change sceptic, Robert. Oh, really? Which in, the, which in the eyes of probably half the people looking at this, or as I say, the inner city university educated latte drinking uh, uh, <laughs> public that like to think knows what's the best for us being a climate change skeptic some puts me somewhere between a holocaust denier and a pedophile <laughs> um, but i've only been in this game for 50 years this is my 52nd vintage right. just gone yeah. and um 53rd and I haven't seen anything yet that I haven't seen before. Really? You know, I've, seen, I've seen wet ones and dry ones and hot ones and cold ones and early ones and late ones because, I mean, the good Lord sends everything down. We haven't noticed any trend. I'm sure the, the climate scientists are telling it's there and, the, and the, you know, the, the, at the moment, we're just doing what we're doing. We have to be adaptive. I mean, you know, if it... If it doesn't rain, we'll put some water on. If it yeah. rains too much, we'll oh, put so you're not doing anything dramatic like looking at different no, 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 no. Okay. We've been, we've been doing it this way for a while. We try to do it better. I mean, we, have, we, we our viticulture has changed over the years. I think our viticulture has improved over the years. The biggest improvement that's happened over the years is canopy management. We've learned how to manage canopies and how to handle things and how to handle sunlight and grapes. And um, I think we're doing a far better job now than we were you know, when I started. And the vine age, of course, translates well into the, the character of the wine anyway. So how old are they now? Uh, well, the first of them were planted in 68. So that's 51, 52, mm. 52 years old. Yeah, and, uh, and and they range between there. We did the majority of the plantings of over half the place between 52 and, sorry, 68 and 74. Mm -hmm. And then uh, after 74, of course, we had this whole wine plant, the vine pool scheme in Australia, and, you know, everything went haywire. So we planted nothing then until 89. Right. And the rest was planted. And we're actually still planting. We planted 10 acres of Cabernet uh, last year, and we have another 10 acres of Cabernet ready to plant this year. So you're expanding. Uh, That's great. We are, uh, we are, uh, we, this is a, well, this is a transitional soil to the, to the east. I mean, uh, a little bit further east than our existing vineyards. Um, still great soil, not yeah. pure Terra Rossa. There is some Terra Rossa bank through it. Yeah. Uh, but superb for Cabernet and it, it's going to make some great wine uh, later on. So we're still confident with where things are going. Okay. Very much so. Then the next question is um, from somebody else. Um, obviously, these two wines are different styles entirely, and do they speak to different demographics? Is the question. Oh, I don't think so. Um, I'm not sure what our demographic is. I mean, I'm not. I'm not. A, I'm, not a, I'm not a scientist. I mean, uh, we sell to everyone from um, from people uh, 18 and 19 and just launching into the uh, into the wine buying, um, the, the wine drinking world, uh, to uh, you know people well into their well into their 80s. Um, I don't, I don't, I don't, I'm not sure where our demographic is. Right. Certainly, the musician is there for those people who want a good wine at a good price, yep. uh, and and to be able to drink it. And and I suppose, in a way, uh, those people who who don't have uh, big houses, you know, plenty of people right. like, like a big house, yeah, 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 and uh, and they don't have a place to store their wine, that they can, in confidence, go to uh, go go to a retailer. Uh, buy the buy it, drink it, and go back and buy some more tomorrow. Mm. Whereas the Cabernet is more for the serious wine drinker. 
Then there's uh, another if question. There is such a creature. <laughs> there's another question here about brand Australia, but I think we we sort of dealt with that. And the last question <laughs> is, um, why don't you make That's more sparkling shiraz? <laughs> Sparkling Shiraz. Sparkling Shiraz is Australia's gift to the wine world. Yeah. Sparkling Shiraz is what I drink every night after work. And I can't see any reason why Sparkling Shiraz should be sold in quantity in Singapore. Because it's ideal for that climate. It's cold, it's fizzy, it's red, it's oh, alcoholic. Yeah. And, it goes with, and it goes with not only Western cuisine, but it goes with all the other great cuisines that you're going to find in Singapore. Well, I must tell you that a big sector of people who buy your Sparkling Shiraz from us are the Americans. Because... They they have it with uh, Thanksgiving, the whole bloody yeah, right with turkey, turkey, right with turkey. Yeah, so um, that's a big sector for us. But the uh, the complaint from one of my Australian clients was, you always run out of the damn stuff whenever she's trying to buy it. But we, we well, that's not that's not my problem. I've got it here, Robert. Yeah, it's, it's up my to you problem. <laughs> it's your problem. <laughs> Crank your, crank your, crank your, sharpen your pencil and put in some more orders. I'm more than happy, as you know. Wine Exchange Asia has been a client of Magellan's for a hell of a long time. Uh, and it's, it's very strong. We enjoyed doing business. And, we, and you know, we, we spoke yesterday about uh, another little thing that might come up later on, a more expensive one. If I can, for those listening, if I can talk Robert into it, I'd like to do like a two-pack of, say, 14 Malia and 14 GPL 60 out, 68. They're really hard to get yeah. and bloody expensive top-end cabinet. A lot it's, of the people here tonight may not even have heard of it. You know, maybe you want to talk just very quickly about the GP. Oh, the GPL 68 grew out of, uh, of uh, uh, me asking the winemakers, could we make a top end, really top end, a cabinet that rivals something like John Riddock and the rest of it? And they all said, yeah, of course. And uh, they said, what's the budget? I said, there isn't with <laughs> this one. Yeah. And uh, which was a stupid thing to say. But um, anyway, we only made 200 dozen of it. We've made it every year. Uh, we haven't pushed it. I like it aging in our cellar. It trickles out to the Cognoscenti. Halliday's gave it 96, I think, or something like that, for those that are into points. Um, it, um, uh, there are those of my customers who think it is better than John Riddock. Uh, I think maybe, it is, maybe I'm, that's I'm, what I'm we should do. Maybe we should do the Riddock next to the, the GP. We get you and Sue to sure. one line. Sure. And... <laughs> that could be quite fun. <laughs> we, can do, we can do all sorts of things, right? Well, actually, one of the, one of the beauties about, uh, about Zoom and this sort of stuff is the flexibility for us to yeah. do this. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Which, makes, so, uh, which makes life easy. For sure. Anybody else with any questions before we let Prof go? Guys? Have I brought everyone to tears? No, no questions. No, I've, I've got a question, Robert. I just wonder why, why, why Magella? Because it sounds like an, a Spanish Rioja. Yeah, everyone, everyone, everyone says that. Russell, uh, was that Russell coming? No, in? my name's Alan, but uh, but yeah. don't mind Russell. Oh, no, 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 anyway, look, forget about it. My Zoom's done funny things, and I can't see anyone. You yeah, there? Somebody, somebody screen's right. taken over. But keep talking. Uh, I can see Robert. I can see Robert. Mm -hmm. All right, um, Magella. Magella grew out of um, my mother being the long story without running too late. It, being a very good Catholic lady, had a devotion to an Italian saint called Saint Gerard Magella, Santa Gerardo Magella, the patron saint of mothers in the old Catholic tradition. So, if you're a strong Catholic in those days and you're having trouble, too many miscarriages, couldn't get pregnant, that sort of stuff, you would pray to Saint Gerard. And so, um, uh, Mum and Dad went farming after World War II and named the farm Magella. The vineyard became the Magella Vineyard. We didn't name it that. Everyone called it that because it was on the Magella property. And when we came to release the wine, um, Alan, we couldn't think of anything else to call it. So we thought, bugger it, let's call it Magella. So uh, Sir Gerard was a redemptorist priest. I wrote to the redemptorist. Uh, he was um, Italian, 1600s, uh, uh, sorry, 1700s, so 16th century. And uh, I wrote to the Redemptorist and they said, yeah, not a problem. So, um, hence Magella. So, it is not Spanish, it is Italian. And uh, if you're lucky enough to travel to Italy, hopefully safely, the big province east of Rome, Abruzzo, the oh. biggest mountain in Abruzzo is Monte Maiella or La Maiella. And the biggest national park in Italy is the Maiella National Park. Oh, Fantastic. The best porchetta in the world comes from Sulmona at the foothills. You'd like it too, Robert. At the foothills of Monte Maiella. Fantastic. fantastic. It's where the it's where the confetti comes from. The uh, the, the sugared almonds. 
Oh, yes, yes, yeah, fantastic. Right. In his heart, he's actually a Nitalophile, not a Francophile. Well, then no wonder you and Lou get on so well. <laughs> Although he's from a slightly different part of Italy than you. Than, than, than yeah, I know, he's from that bad part. Yeah, yeah they, they but, um, but, but certainly, um, Certainly, it is it, it is Italian. So, I mean, we, we anglicise it and call it Magello, but it should be called Maiella. Oh, oh. All right. Well, any 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 other questions from anyone before we say good night? Hi, Robert. Yeah. Hey, mate. Hi. Hi it's Kuntal. Good, Hi, good Kuntal. Hey, um, could Prof and you talk about the 2014 a little bit? I know that you have it available now as well here in Singapore. I I drank uh, I drank 2014 two days ago. Oh, it looks really good. I mean, the, 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 the thing you've got to remember, of course, is, as I said earlier on, we, you don't see masses of vintage variation in a place like Kunawara. We don't go, you know, you, you, we have regions in the world where you go from here to here and back to there, back to there, all over the place. We're, we're fortunate. We're lucky. Um, we live in a stable climate. We've got great soil. Um, the weather generally is pretty good. And um, so 14 looks quite, quite superb, but it doesn't look that much different. Well, I, I, would, I would say that if we were to time capsule the 14 to today and be looking at, the, at 14 yep. and 16 at the same time, same age, I would say, Quintal, that the 14 would be more stoic and more structured. It would certainly show a lot more canon at the early stage. I think one of the winners for me as a dodgy salesman is that the 16 Cabernet is going to appeal to people right away. It's yep. incredibly well immediately. Um, and at a, at a stage that's maybe 18 to 24 months ahead of the general Magella curve, which is quite quite exciting. I think we're going to move an enormous amount of, of the 2016 in the next six months or so before Prof runs out. Every year in Kunawara, we do a, a, a vertical of the last 10 years of Magella. We do it for our October Cabernet weekend, which we're not sure whether we'll have this year. It depends yeah. on COVID-19. And we'll always look at um, at uh, the last 10 vintages. So the first two vintages will be, you know, out of oak. Yep. And then the rest. And that's what we've talked about, Robert. One day, yeah, when we're we allowed, to, when I'm allowed to come back. Yeah, we've got to come back. I'll just bring three bottles. I'll organise to get in three bottles. Yeah. Of the last ten vintages, that'll be brilliant. And we'll, we'll we will do it, Robert, just as a uh, just as a tasting. Um, people come along, pay their money, and uh, yeah. and uh, they don't get to buy anything, but they do get to taste those wines. That'll be awesome. And honestly, you will find if we had a hundred people, and then we polled at the end of it to see which wine was the best, uh, we'd probably find it's pretty even. 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, yeah. 10. <laughs> you have no idea. Every year, and 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 the, the same guys that 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 were here last year that said that fourteen was the absolute best, then go back and say, no, look, I tell you the truth, ten was really good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, the palettes change, we change, but when you line them all up, it's bugger all between them. It's, 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 you, you're talking, you're talking little bits, fractions. Yeah, you're right. You're not, you're not, you're not talking massive amounts. You know, this is a vintage we can call a vintage, and this one is a. But Prof, well, that's, that's the really interesting thing about Magella because if you look at wins, for example, in the same price brackets, the vintage variations are tremendous swings compared to yes. the Magella proposition. But then they've got big vineyards and changes in winemakers and yeah. and um, you know, they, can, they can pick and choose and do different things. And, and I think, I don't know whether Sue tries to change the styles or, or what will ch chase the styles. Yeah. Um, we don't. I mean, uh, Magella for you know for you can every bottle of Magella you can buy from 1991 Shiraz onwards was grown by us and made by Bruce. So uh, no changes in vineyards. It's all the same. No changes in winemaker. There was a change in wineries. 91 through to 98, it was made at Brands Wines where Bruce was working, yep. and by 91 we built our own cellar. But uh, we use the same techniques. We've always used the same oak regime. Um, it's been the same aging, the same bottling, the same labels. We, we are intensely boring. We, we, we don't change very much. And, and I don't know change very much because I don't want to. Yeah, yeah. I like doing what I'm doing and people yeah. like it anyway.
I think that's probably the, the, the right thing to end off on. If it's not broken, don't bloody fix it. And <laughs> I think that's, that's your <laughs> philosophy. It's expensive to fix it. You know, someone said, you're going to change your labels. I said, oh, I happen yeah. to like them the way they are. <laughs> so, um, you know, if, so long as it's okay, if, if people start telling me that your wines are now nowhere near as good as they were, yeah. then I'll start getting worried. Yeah, yeah. But they haven't yet, Robert. They keep yeah. saying, well, these wines are as good as ever. They, we buy a Magellan with confidence. I, I would like that. If, you, if we're going to have a motto somewhere, yeah. if we can put it on, you know, your next sales pitch, by yeah. Magellan with confidence. Yeah, quite right. On that note, thank you so much, Prof. Uh, we'll see you in a month's time for the vintage, the retrospective. Yeah. I'll be yeah. writing everybody about those offers uh, tomorrow morning after I've sobered up. Thanks, everybody. <laughs> <laughs> thank you, Robert. Thank, thank, you, thank, thank you for your support, more particularly for all your customers. You know, wh whatever happens, yeah. I need I need customers. Yeah, well, uh, you know, a few of I, I, we depend. You on you and your customers, and and the same I could say the same to uh, right through Australia and through the rest of the world. At yeah. the end of the day, this is a business yeah. for me, yeah. uh, and uh, to keep my uh, wife in the manner to which she's grown accustomed, <laughs> I need to. <laughs> <I'm>, <laughs> I need to be able to sell a lot. Rest, rest so you, you, you have our support. Thanks, everybody, good and good night. We'll see you again. Thank you, everyone. Okay. Thank you. Bye. 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 Thanks, Bye. Thanks, Thanks, Thanks for having me. Great stuff. Awesome. See you. Bye. Be good. Thanks, everyone. Thanks, Robert. See you. Cheers. Bye. Thanks, Robert. Thanks. Bye. 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 Bye.